Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be covering my entire current hammock setup. We're going to be talking about top quilt, under quilt, tarps, hammock, and loads of accessories in between. So stay tuned because we have a lot to talk about. Okay, so getting started, all of these items here are from a company called One Wind. You guys can see the logo right there. All of these items are available on Amazon.ca or Amazon.com. I just want to mention that this video is going to be on all of these products, so I'm not going to be covering the specs in this video as there is just too much to talk about. So I am going to be showing every item in close detail though. We'll run through each item on the table and then I'm going to set up the entire hammock system and then we can have a really close look at how everything works. So getting started, I'm just going to move some things off of the table totally. And I would like to start with the under quilt and the top quilt system because they are actually a pair. So I do have one here. I've got the other here. Let's start with the under quilt itself. So I'm just going to bump this out of the way here. And this video was highly suggested from you guys and it's taken me a little while to get to doing it because there are so many items. And ultimately I just decided to do a collective video on everything rather than each individual item. So the One Wind stuff sack is a very interesting stuff sack. It does have this long buckling system. It goes over top and it clicks in. You can compress it down quite small. Both ends open up, or sorry, one end opens up on this. Both ends open up on the blanket slash top quilt, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So this one, only one opens. If we pull out the under quilt, and this is a synthetic under quilt, the outside is this green material and the inside is this jet black material. Now this stuff is extremely soft and smooth, almost silk like, very, very nice. It's not overly heavy. Like I said, I'm not going to cover the specs, but I do believe just to touch on really quickly this under quilt and this blanket together because you can purchase this as a combo as a four season winter combo. I want to say these two together are in the three pound range. But don't hold me to that. You can check out all their listings on Amazon to gather that information. So this is the under quilt. This is a full length under quilt. It has all kinds of toys and gadgets built into it, which makes this incredible for any hammock system that you guys are running. That is a traditional lengthwise hammock system, I should say. So down here at one end of the hammock, we have a nest, a monster amount of adjustment cables. And these are all totally messed up right now. I've had this on many different hammocks. So we will get in a, we'll get a really close look at this in a little bit. I just want to loosen these off for now and we'll open it up in a blanket format. So this is a rectangular under quilt. So it is long and wide in the shape of a rectangle. It does have some plastic hooks on the side of it. So this will help you hang it on various hammocks if you do really want to lift up the sides a little bit more or possibly cocoon yourself in, you can do that. And there are even plastic snaps that are fitted onto this. So if you are inside, you can simply snap this together and actually make a cocoon pod inside of the hammock. And I'll show that in closer detail once we do get the hammock set up. But this is a basic under quilt. It is very, very thick, incredibly warm. I've had this down to zero degrees just with this one under quilt. And I've actually been totally warm inside of my hammock using a minus 15 degree sleeping bag inside of the hammock as a top quilt. So this works really well. We do have adjustments, just all kinds of adjustments. I'm going to have to set this up and show it to you guys because there are a lot, but it is an excellent product and it works very, very well. Now, we have another part to this. Like I said, the blanket is part of this system. You can purchase these together or separate. This stuff sack does have openings on both ends. And the reason why they've done this is so you can actually snake the hammock through and then store your stuff sacks up on the ridge line or on a strap or on the hammock as opposed to just dangling it off the side of the hammock. So I'm just going to pull this out. This is basically the same 
construction as the underquilt, except it is a giant blanket. It's just a very, very large rectangular blanket. Same fill, same insulation type, same fabrics, black on the inside, green on the outside. Now you can actually rotate these if you want black on the outside and green on the inside. The only thing that it will change is the orientation of these snaps, which really doesn't matter because you can still use the snaps either way, black or green side. It's just a little trickier to attach. Now this being a very large blanket, like I said, green on the outside, black on the inside. It is fitted with all of these plastic snaps again. So what I like to do with this, I've been using this a lot in warm weather by itself, and I actually snap all of them together. And you can create either A, a top quilt. So if I do three of them up like that, I essentially create kind of a foot box area. And then I've got a large blanket up here to cover my body with. So that's one method of using it. Of course, the other method is just completely wide open as a camp blanket. The other method is snapping them all up and creating a rectangular sleeping bag, of course, with an open footbox area. However, this blanket is extremely long. I often tuck this over like that and I lay on it with my feet in there, closing the footbox. And this works perfectly fine, even down to five degrees Celsius. This is totally warm with a, with a proper sleeping pad, of course. Now, the thing is, these are available as a combo. So these snaps are more important than just that. These snaps can actually click in to the underquilt. So if we orientate this the other way, these snaps click in to the underquilt. And you have two options with this. One, you can essentially double the underquilt. So if you snap all those in both sides and then you tuck it in underneath, now we have an underquilt that is two layers, both the underquilt and the blanket, getting you down to even colder temperatures. And it totally works. It gets very, very warm with this system. Or you can click it in just like that. And then you can slide into the hammock and then click this over top of you as a top quilt. And now the top quilt's not gonna fall off of you because it is clicked in to the snap. So essentially you have your under quilt under and then this clicked in on top. So even if you do toss and turn in your hammock, the blanket is secured on top of you, which I really like. And that'll make more sense once we actually get it set up on the hammock. So that is a very, very quick look. And you guys can see like the insulation on this is just massive and it packs down very small. Those stuff sacks are compressible, but that is a lot of insulation for right around three pounds. It is synthetic. It is a very, very nice fabric. The quality on the stitching and the, the craftsmanship is absolutely amazing. I really do like this from One Wind Outdoors. So I'm gonna get this off to the side and we're gonna cover a few more products here on the tabletop really quickly. I just wanna talk about the tarps first and then we'll move into the hammock and some of the other accessories as well. All right, so the rain flies with the One Wind hammock system is currently available in two different colors. One is this grayish kind of white color, which is very, very nice in the winter time. Also amazing on cloudy days. It lets in a lot of natural light. Uh, really do enjoy this color. And then they also have it available in an olive drab green as well as the rest of their hammock kit. So if you want a totally green hammock system, we're talking all the accessories, the hammock, the blanket, the tarp, this is the way to go. So let's talk about the white tarps. I feel that'll probably show up on camera a little bit better. Again, with the, with the drawstrings on this stuff sack, it is available on both ends to open up, which means you can just snake this down the tarp and leave it up on the, on the suspension system rather than having to take the whole thing off and, uh, and have to hang the bag separately. And that also means that you can actually store gear on the ridge line by putting it inside of the stuff sack. So I do enjoy that quite a bit. This tarp is a very, very nice tarp. It is fully seam sealed. It does come with a separate bag of guy outlines and the pegs. So I'll give you guys a brief look at this stuff. These ones have not been attached yet. So these are literally brand new. They do have these style of adjusters to run your guy lines through. Four of those, aluminum. And then we have the actual guy out material. So with this tarp being the grayish white tarp, it does have one, two, three, four, five, six guy line kits. And I believe these are each 10 feet long. I'm not totally sure on the length, but this is, I believe, two millimeter paracord. It is very strong stuff, and it does have Reflectix built into it. So this is reflective guy line material. 
does include those. These are very important because the tarp is loaded full of adjusters, making this a one-stop shop tarp, meaning you don't have to have anything else to set this up, just the tarp, the ridge line, and everything is totally taken care of. So let's give this a really quick look at, and this is fully seam taped as well, so it is totally waterproof. Carabiners are already pre-attached. We have some bungee here and some of these little clothesline hooks. So once you do attach the guy line, instead of having to ball up the guy line and take it off of the tarp, you can actually ball it up just like that and then tuck it into the elastic and cinch it in just like that and then pack the entire tarp away with the guy lines pre-attached. So when you do have to set up the tarp, everything is already attached. There's no looking for additional lines. They're right there, nice and neat. And I love this system. It makes hammocks and tarps incredibly easy to set up, even in wind, rain, snow, no matter the conditions, very easy. So the skirt of this tarp is totally reflective material. This little band material does reflect at nighttime. It is a hammock tarp with door configurations and side pullouts. And we'll have a really closer look at this once I do set up the entire hammock system. But I just wanna show you guys some of the hardware on here. This is one of the door areas. So this would be down on the ground to close the door. It does have a carabiner built into it with a long bungee cord. So you can actually fold the doors shut and simply hook on the bungee. And then when it times come to get into the hammock, you don't have to unhook this from the ground. You just simply part the door open, walk in, and with that built-in bungee, it'll automatically close itself, which is tremendously useful out when hammocking. The branding is also on the tarp. It's kind of ghosted in, if you guys can catch that on camera. It is reflective, so it does shine in the nighttime. And I'm just looking for one of the side pullouts. So here's one of the side pullouts here. This is the inside of the tarp. It is reinforced with some kind of gusset material, making it very strong, fully seam taped. On the other side, here is the side pullout. So it does have that clothespin adjuster there to keep the guy out line neatly stored in there. It does have an adjuster on the end so you can dial in your guy line. And I'll get this all hooked up when we do set up the hammock so you guys can see that in action. But it does have a very nice reinforced area to really pull out the sides of the tarp. That way the wind's not blowing it in and you have a lot of headroom by opening up the inside of the tarp. So a very quick look at that. Of course, we will set it up and we'll have an even closer look at that. What next? Well, we do have an under quilt protector. This is in olive drab green. This is waterproof, so this does go underneath of your under quilt to protect from any kind of rain or blowing snow or whatever moisture you may have. The stuff sack is attached to it, so it folds back in on itself. And this is a very rubberized, siliconized product. It's very, very waterproof. It does have alligator clips on it, so you can actually clamp this on to your underside of your under quilt or hang it a little bit higher. There are adjusters all over this. Basically, it's an olive drab waterproof cover with guy line material inside, so you can actually hike it up really tight around your under quilt. Pretty straightforward on this guy. It protects the under quilt and it does a tremendous job at that as well. We then have snake skin. So this very tiny, small bag, very small bag is a snake skin system for tucking your tarp away. Um, it is very, very helpful on the trail. Just gotta unravel this. I have it tucked inside out right now. So it does pack in on a double kind of drawstring bag again. So you can actually tuck this up on the ridge line instead of having the bag all over the place. And it is a very long snake skin. So you can roll your tarp up in the snake skin and have it open during the daytime out of the way so it's not blowing around. And then we do have adjusters on either end to really cinch it in so it's not gonna be moving around. So that's a fairly simple product in itself. We'll have a closer look at this once we get the hammock set up. Talking about the hammock, let's open up these two bags here. I have the hammock straps, which are very interesting. There are no loops on this strap. It is not a daisy chain system because this hammock is actually adjustable with a whoopee sling and kind of a strap system where you can dial it in by the millimeter. So there is one loop here and basically the open end of the strap will go through that loop around your tree. And then there are no other loops on this strap at all. You can just pass it through the metal buckle system on the hammock and you can dial it in or loosen it off very, very easily without having to unhook a carabiner and all that nonsense. So this actually helps cut down on a lot of weight and it makes using the hammock extremely easy. Moving on to the hammock. Now, as I said, whoopee sling. 
This does have a whoopee sling built into it. Here's a close look at the buckle system that the strap will run through and it tensions itself. It is on this kind of Kydex Kevlar cable. This is extremely strong and very, very lightweight. It then moves into the actual whoopee sling system for the ridge line itself. So you could dial that in tight or loose. And if you guys are familiar with whoopee slings, of course, you got to stretch out the material to have it lock in. Kind of like one of those little Chinese finger trap toys where you push your fingers in and they can't get out. That's how this system works. Very lightweight hammock, very, very lightweight. Just parachute ripstop material, has buckles at either end, very simplistic hammock, no bug net attached to this. And that'll bring us to the next product with one wind, is the bug net. So the bug net on this is very interesting. I, at first I didn't like it, and then afterwards of using it, I actually fell in love with it. Now I'm not gonna take it out of the bag right yet because it is just bug net. It's basically a giant sock that goes over top of the hammock. One end is open quite wide, so if you do have an under quilt on the hammock, you can still pass the bug net through and then cinch it up with the draw cord. And then one end is very small, so it stays cramped on there with the drawstring, of course. It is a bottom entry bug net, so there is no side entry. Now, the thing I like about this is you have to crawl under the bug net to get in the hammock which seems a little strange, but what this does is it actually enables two things. One, total bug protection, meaning no mosquitoes or no wood ticks are gonna get in your under quilt. Because if you're in a hammock with a side door zip, your under quilt is outside, totally exposed to the elements, even wood ticks. So having this go under the under quilt, and then you simply reach out and pull in the bungee cord drawstring, which I'll show once we get it set up, this totally encapsulates your hammock with bug protection. The other thing that it offers is when you're inside of the hammock, if you're like me and you happen to store a few clothing items or even some snacks in your under quilt, now you don't have to unzip the hammock and reach out. You can just simply reach under and around because your bug net is over the under quilt. So this is a pretty interesting idea and I actually like it. It totally encapsulates the entire hammock, insulation and everything in a bug net. So that's very helpful. The other product we have are some additional straps. So you can get these straps with the metal buckles, just like on the hammock. You could buy these separately and attach them to any hammock, which makes it very, very useful to have. I have an extra set just in case, so I can attach it to a different hammock, or if one of these get worn out, I can then attach a new one and continue on hammock camping. So that is basically it. Now I'm gonna wrap all this up, get it up to my two trees where I'm gonna hang the hammock system. And we're gonna hook up one piece at a time, have a detailed look at each and individual item, and then take it from there. All right, guys, now we got all the boring stuff out of the way, we can get into the fun part of this video, and that is taking a look at the actual product. So I've already got the hammock hung by itself. You guys can see the ridge line is above my head. I'll give you guys a closer look at the buckle system of the hammock, but before I do that, I just want to cover, we've got the ridge line, the ridge line is detachable, so if you do not want this in the way, you simply loosen off the loop at the foot end and pass it through the hammock and just kind of tuck it up at the side. You can put it inside of the bag and tuck it off to the side as well. I personally like having the ridge line here because it comes with this little neat little pocket and I can put my flashlight, snacks, whatever things I need to put in there for the night. That works really well. And of course, you can move that anywhere is on the hammock. There is also a little Prusik knot and a, kind of like a little zipper pull put on here. So you can attach a headlamp to this and move it wherever you need it to go. Or you can take that off if you don't like it. The hammock itself is extremely comfortable. I believe this is coming in at 11 foot. You're going to have to check the, uh, the listing on this for all the specs. As I mentioned, I'm not going to talk about specs in the video. So I'm just gonna give it a really quick lay down. We'll go this way. Now, of course, I have it pitched really low and really loose, so it's not pitched for sleeping. It's more pitched for hanging the quilt and showing it to you guys. But you can have a look right here. It is very comfortable. It opens up quite wide. This is a single hammock, so if I do wanna open it up and really lay back, I've got all kinds of room to do so. It is a very lightweight ripstop material. However, it is extremely strong. So I'm gonna give you guys a close look at the buckling system, and then we'll get the hammock lifted up a little bit and add some underquilts to it. Okay guys, coming in really close at this buckling system with this Kevlar cable here. All you gotta do is pass this through the top and then come back through the bottom. To tighten up the hammock, you simply pull on the strap, it goes tighter, and to loosen it, you simply push the, the strap through and you can loosen it off or tighten it back up. Very easy and very simple to operate. 
Okay, so coming over to the whoopee sling setup. If you guys are familiar with whoopee slings, you already know how this works. For those of you who do not know how this works, I'm just going to run through it very, very briefly. We do have a tag end of this Kevlar cable, and then this cable runs inside of this cable, making a double layer. And then you have this bead. What this bead does is it enables you to basically loosen off that suspension. You'll see the hammock just drop down drastically. That'll make the hammock flatter. Now, if you want to tighten it up, it'll actually bring the ridgeline in and it'll create more of a drooping hammock system or setup. So you simply hold the non-working end and you pull the tail through and you basically, sorry, you got to hold it from this side and tighten it in. And once you get it tight, you need to set it. So then you then spread the cable apart and now it is locked in. So that creates more of a droop in your hammock. You just want to make sure you're pulling it from the right end and keep the bead kind of out of the way. So that'll help raise the hammock and scrunch it up a little tighter, more of a sag. And like I said, if you loosen it off, it'll create a longer hammock, more flatter lay. I typically set up more of a drooping hammock as I sit and lounge in it quite often, but it does have this built-in whoopee sling, which is very, very useful. It's more of a whoopee ridge line rather than a sling because a typical whoopee sling would be your suspension going to the tree. This is just the ridge line itself. And like I said, it is detachable. You can pass it through the hammock and take it off at any point in time. Okay guys, so now that we had a look at just the hammock and some of the features about it, I do have the under quilt. I'm gonna set this up on the hammock. Now I have the adjustments kind of loosened off and all over the place. So it's gonna hang very, very loose at first, but we will tighten it up and I'll run through all of the adjustments so you guys can see how easy this is to adjust, not only with this hammock, but with any other typical style hammock in this fashion. So you guys can attach it to your setup as well. I've got the carabiner and all of these shock lines are attached to it. I'm just going to run it down to one end, click it on the metal buckle system, and then I'm going to grab the other end, come over to this end of the hammock and do the same thing. I'm just going to loosen some of these off because like I said, some of them are tightened up from a previous hammock trip that I was on using a different setup. So we'll hook that on there. And here you can see we have the under quilt separate from the hammock. So now I'm just going to pass the hammock into the under quilt. And of course, we're not really hung proper. So now I'm going to bring the camera in and show you guys a close up of some of these cords and cables and adjusters to show you just how many adjustments are available with this under quilt. Okay guys, so this looks like a crazy mess right now. It's actually very, very simple. So first off, we do have these cord locks and these simply cinch in the end of the hammock, locking in all the heat from your foot end and your head end. I like to tighten those up quite a bit just like that. And then we have some other adjusters here. So we have a main line adjustment, which will pick up the slack from the center of the hammock to lift that up. We then have two adjusters on the outside. So if you look at these two right here, if I loosen this guy off, what this does is it pulls the shock cord through the side of the hammock under quilt, lifting that up. So I like to tighten that up just to keep it up a little bit. And then we have this secondary adjuster. Now this one is currently not maxed out. This is attached to the under quilt. It'll actually pull the under quilt that way if you need it to move over. Right now it's perfectly fine right where it's at, but you can see how that adjusts. If I wanna pull that tighter and leave that down, that'll adjust the shock cord in the quilt. And then if I need the quilt to go over even more, I can simply pull on the adjuster like that and it'll pull the under quilt this way. So it looks like it's really complicated. It's actually very simple once you start using the under quilt. So I'm gonna tighten some of these up and get this hung properly and then I'll jump inside and give you guys a quick look at it. Okay guys, so here I am in the hammock. You can see that the hammock is kind of off to the side. This is typically how I like to sleep in the colder weather. I like to hike the under quilt up really high. I still have the proper hang underneath of me. I'm not squished and I'm not hanging too low. And this can be adjusted, of course, on how tight you run the ridge line on the hammock. You'll hang higher in the quilt or lower. And of course, how high you have the hammock hung with the adjustment straps to the trees. But this will give you guys an idea of how this can hang. You can have it up high or down low. It has loads of adjustments. Now, one thing you can do, as I was mentioning over at the tabletop, is I could snap these together just like this. So if I want to make a cocoon system, I could snap all of these together. Let me just reach this guy here. It's a little difficult. But if I want to snap all these together just like that, if it's early kind of fall or late spring and you find it a little cold out, you can make a cocoon system just like this. 
All right, so hopefully that shows you guys some of the features with the underquilt and how you can use it as an underquilt and even as a pod system. Now I do have the blanket. So what we could do with the blanket is basically double up the underquilt. So if you open it up lengthwise, you correspond the snaps that are on the blanket with the underquilt. So I'm gonna start down at the foot end and I'm gonna work myself all the way down one side. And basically I'm just gonna tuck it underneath of the hammock which is gonna give us a double layer underquilt. This only takes a few moments. You could pack it away like this if you're in the winter time and you know you're gonna be using it doubled up. You can actually pack it away with the snaps done up. Today I wanted to show it individually. So there I've got one side totally snapped in. Now if I grab the blanket, tuck it inside of the underquilt, and here I've got the hammock. I'm gonna come up on the other side of the hammock and I'm gonna do the exact same procedure. I'm just gonna click in all of these snaps one at a time and we now have a double layer under quilt rated for negative temperatures in the winter time this does get very very warm i've used it in the winter time i've used it in the fall i've used it in the spring and i can tell you in fall it's almost too hot and even in spring it gets very very warm but in the winter time it does stay surprisingly warm and it's actually very comfortable so we'll get all these clicked in. Now keep in mind when you do add this to the underquilt, it is going to add a little bit more weight. So you're gonna to have to adjust the suspension again because you'll find that it's gonna droop down lower. So all you gotta do with all these adjustments is just tighten them up just a little bit. So we come down to this end. I like tightening up the main running lines and that'll get it up a little bit higher. So then when you do crawl inside of the hammock, We now have a very, very thick underquilt and absolutely warm. Now, of course, you can fine tune the adjustment, lifting it higher, uh, lowering it down, however you need to do it. But that is a very, very warm underquilt. And there is one more setup with this. I'll show you as a top quilt also snapped into the hammock. That way your blanket's not going to fall off of you when you're inside sleeping. Okay, guys, now that I'm in the hammock, I have the top quilt over top of the hammock and I've got the under quilt underneath of the hammock, I can simply reach over. This entire side is already clicked onto the under quilt. So I could drape this over and then I can reach down and click all of these snaps back into the actual under quilt. And I basically have insulation that is not going to fall off of me. I could bring this all the way up to my neck, to my head. I could drape it inside. It is attached to the under quilt. It's not going anywhere. And I gotta say, this is definitely comfortable doing it like this. Now there is one additional trick to this. If you guys have another top quilt in your hammock, and let's say you wanna create a little bit of a warm cocoon. Well, this top quilt will actually go over top of the ridge line and snap onto the under quilt, creating a tent of insulation basically. Now I don't recommend sleeping that way because it will build up with a lot of condensation unless you have your head area totally open, that may work. But you can actually run this over top of the ridge line. I'll show you guys briefly what I'm talking about here. If I were to take this, throw it up over top, you basically have a pod system. All right, so now you can see what I'm talking about with an over pod system. I personally would not sleep like this. It just, it, it wouldn't really be beneficial for me. However, if you do want to drape it over and create a pod system like a sock, I do recommend lifting the hammock up, so tightening up the straps and lessening this area, but it will create a nice kind of insulated cavity inside of your hammock, trapping in a lot more heat. Keep in mind the foot end is still wide open, so you are gonna need a sleeping bag or top quilt inside of the hammock, but this is just another fun option. All right, now that we've had a look at the hammock and both under quilt and the blanket combinations, we're now back to just one under quilt and the hammock, and I wanna talk about the under quilt protector. This is a very small bag. It does scrunch down extremely small in the palm of my hand. Drawstring enclosure. Now remember, like over at the picnic table when I was explaining, this is attached to the stuff sack. So you're never gonna lose the stuff sack. It is attached to the under quilt protector. And this is very, very simple to attach. You just run the hook all the way up to your hanging suspension, drape it underneath the hammock, 
and you're basically waterproof from any blowing rain, mist, fog, snow, whatever you got to deal with, this will work. This is also perfect for a sheet. So if you're inside of a sleeping bag, this will work as a nice summer sleeping bag itself. But if you're inside of a sleeping bag, this can work as a sleeping bag liner by itself. So it's a nice way to kind of repurpose gear instead of just hanging it up on the shelf for a particular season. It's nice to be able to use your gear all throughout the year. So I'm going to attach this and show you guys with it attached to the underquilt. All right, so here we have the underquilt protector hung underneath of the underquilt. And this does add a significant amount of warmth outside of the winter season. It also blocks a lot of the wind because it is a waterproof ripstop nylon. So it will act as a wind blocker, creating a little bit more warmth as well. So here you can see the actual built-in stuff sack is usable as a pocket if you wish. And you can hang this tight or loose just like the under quilt. It has multiple adjustment points so you can move it to whatever area you like it to. Also, all of this stuff is usable with other hammock gear, so you don't just have to use it with the one wind system. It works with many other hammock systems. So I'll give you guys a closer look at how I attach this to the under quilt and show you guys some of the hardware on it. All right, so coming in for a close look, I just want to detach this under quilt protector. And we can see that we have one of these clothespin type hooks and that will move up and down the shock cord. We also have built in alligator clips. So if you want to clamp this to any type of fabric, you can actually put in a piece of fabric in there being the actual hammock body itself and then clamp down and use that as the hanging point or use the built in hook. So what I've done is I've just simply hooked it just in front of the hammock suspension over top of that, that is locked in. It's not going anywhere. And then you can have the adjustment either tight or loose by tightening that up and that'll cinch around the under quilt riding right where you want it to. Also, there is an adjuster right here to cinch that down if you want to increase the tension on the side of the under quilt protector or loosen it off. There are also hanging points if you do want to click in your own carabiner or maybe some stretchy kind of bungee material here, you can attach that to a different hammock setup and it should work no problem. All right, so now that we've taken a look at the under quilt protector, we're moving along. We've got a lot of products to talk about, and I know there's a lot of people that are saying, let's get to the tarp, let's see the rain fly, and that's kind of the part that I'm waiting for. That's always the fun part, the rain fly. However, we do have another product. We have the One Wind Bug Net. So to attach this, you do need to actually disconnect the entire hammock system from at least one end. So it's important to get this on. It doesn't necessarily have to be covering the hammock right away, but it does need to be on the suspension somehow. So you do need to snake this through there. So I'm just gonna pop this out of the stuff sack. And like I said, when I was over at the tabletop, there is a large gathered end with a bungee cord. And then there is a small gathered end. So this right here is the small gathered end. My fist can kind of barely fit in through there. So I know that I want this at the foot end of the hammock. That way I could pull the whole bug net off, even over the under quilt and everything, and get it out of the way when I want it out of the way. So I know I'm gonna want this larger end right up here, and you guys can see how large that is. I could basically fit my entire body in through that opening. I'm gonna put this end up at the head end, and I'm gonna put the small end at the foot end. I'm gonna snake it through the whole system and show you guys how this works. All right, so to show the smaller end of this bug net, what I like to do is actually bring it over top of the hammock, but just before the buckling system. So in this general area, you can see we've got the hammock here and then the buckle system. I like bringing it to there and tighten up that shock cord there, that little adjuster, and that will snug up the bug net closing off the foot end. Now let's move up to the head end and have a look at that. All right, so simply pulling the bug net over the entire hammock with the under quilt and everything is very simple. Just simply grab on to that cord material and just shake everything through. Even if you have a sleeping bag or a top quilt inside of there, the whole hammock should pass through that without any issues, just like it did there. Simply bring it up to the exact same area and tighten up the adjuster here with this little draw cord. I'm just gonna draw it in there, nice and snug. And that is the bug net set up. Now, how you get inside of it it's very interesting and I actually love this setup now. So I'm going to crawl inside and then I'm going to tighten it up from the inside, creating a bug free area and also protecting my under quilt and everything else from bugs coming inside. I'll show that right now. It is actually a very nice system. It took me a little while to get used to it. Getting in and out was troublesome, but now getting in and out is very easy after I've done it a few times. 
So I'm just going to jump inside. And as you guys can see now, being inside of the bug net, I simply reach out underneath just like this. I grab a hold of the shock cord. I tighten one side and then I reach over to the other side and it has another shock cord and adjuster. I'm just going to tighten up this side as well. Now my bug net is totally encapsulating my entire hammock system, meaning I can reach in the under quilt and grab whatever I need to do. I can live inside of this area totally bug free and it's pretty awesome like this. Now it is a little tricky getting in and out like I stated. If you do want to get in and out, you have to reach underneath, loosen off the toggle adjuster, pop your feet out, and then head out just like that. I actually like this system a lot now that I've used it a number of times because it can come off of the entire hammock by sliding it all the way down and it protects my entire under quilt and everything inside of my hammock from any kind of bugs or spiders, insects of any kind, wood ticks especially, and it just works really well. Okay guys, we are almost complete with the hammock setup. We have one more thing to attach, well actually two more things, but one major thing is the rain fly. Now I was gonna show you guys the white rain fly. I've opted to go with the green one today where the sun is shining on the white. It just overexposes on the camera. So I'm gonna set up the green tarp. It is identical to the white tarp. It's just a difference in color. So this bag opens at both ends. Very important to remember that because we want the bag to stay on the suspension to the tarp. So the bag's not separate and it just helps keep everything organized and clean. So what I like to do is open up one end, find the ridge line material that I'm going to tie to one tree, and then I pull the bag all the way through, I grab the other end, go to the other tree, and you can pitch this very, very loose, because at the end there are adjusters to dial in the tension. Now these adjusters do not come on the tarp on the ridge line ends, I actually attach these myself. Alright, so having a close look at the tarp setup, this is one end of the ridge going to a tree. And basically what I did is I took some webbing material and I looped it through and I've added an adjuster for the guy line. The tarp does not come like this. However, every other point on the tarp operates with the same principle. One addition I would like to see one wind do to the tarp is exactly what I've done here. Attach one of these adjusters right to this webbing point. That way every guy line and even the ridge line is pre-attached to the tarp and there's no need to forget any cord. So I'm just gonna tension this up and show you guys a side angle. All right, so you can see I've got the stuff sack in the center of the tarp. I'm just going to push it off to one end, and then I'm going to draw in those tensioners on the tarp, showing you guys that it's just tremendously easy and very, very convenient to have those attached to the end of the tarp. That way, there's no need to remember to bring any guy out materials, because as you can see here, the guy lines are all pre-attached to the tarp with these shock cords. They're not going anywhere. Now with the addition of the guy lines on the ends, I don't need to bring a ridge line. So this means I don't have to hang my tarp very tight. I can pitch it loose just like you see right here today. And then I can simply go over to either end and draw in the tension, which I'll show you right now. Very simple, very convenient, makes it extremely easy. So I'm just gonna tension this up. And if I feel that's that way good enough, now I wanna tension this. And if I do need to shift the tarp over, it's as simple as going over to one adjuster, loosening it, coming over here and tightening it. There's no need to tie an actual ridge line and run prusik knots. You can do it just like this. So if I tension this up, I've now got a very nice tarp that is tightly pitched. Here is a look at the side guy out. So we do have one side guy out here and one side guy out over here. Now I've opted to not leave the guy out materials on this because I actually use my own guy out material that I've created and I just find it easier to take them off and then reattach with small carabiners when I need it. But the bottom of the tarp does have the pre-attached guy lines as well as the doors have the pre-attached shock cord with the carabiner. So I'm gonna put some tent pegs in the ground, get this set up in storm mode, get the side pullouts attached to the ground, show you guys what we're working with. All right guys, so we've got the tarp pitched in storm mode. So this is how I would run it in heavy winds, rain, snow, whatever I'm dealing with. And I just wanna crawl inside, stay dry and go to sleep. This is a perfect setup. I have it pitched up off of the ground about a foot. If you wanna run this right down to the ground, you can lower the tarp and batten up the shelter. So if you wanna use this as a ground shelter rather than using it with a hammock, 
you could pitch it just like this and bring it right to the ground and enjoy camping that way. But today I have it set up with the hammock. Now I've actually run out of room in my driveway. Ideally, I'd like to have this guy out line on the side pull out out farther so it's not as steep of an angle so you can see that pulls it out more on this side on the other side it's a little bit more apparent because i have more room so i'll show that in greater detail from a straight on view but i do have the adjusters on the bottom so if i do want to guide that in a little tighter all i got to do is pull that and if i want to loosen it off simply loosen it off so it makes it really easy to adjust the tension on the tarp so we get that tension back up so like I said, this is storm mode. We'll roll around to the front and I'll open up both doors, give you guys a look inside. And we'll take a look at the other side as well to show the angle of the sidewall. All right, so here's a look at the hammock door. This can be parted very easily. So if you do want to step inside, you can do that. But I'm just going to detach these shock cords off of the ground so we can open up both door panels and have a very good look at the inside space. So I'm just going to pop these off to the side and on the bottom there are carabiners built into the tarp so i can take that carabiner and run it over to one of the side pullouts on the tarp and hook that on and keep this door wide open so here's a really quick look at what i was just talking about about bringing this outside to hold the door panel open i've just simply clicked it into the side guy out point and that's the door flap secured and open all right so here's the inside look of the hammock and the tarp system it's a little difficult to show from this angle because there is a giant tree in the way of the camera, but you guys can get a good look here. I've got the hammock, the bug net, the under quilt. I've got a load of room inside of here, especially with these side pullouts. It helps pull the tarp out instead of blowing in on your face from the wind. And it just creates a really, really nice living space. Now keep in mind, this is fully seam taped and waterproof. And it's just a bomb proof shelter to use both on the ground as ground sleeping or in the hammock as a hammock sleeper. Also, this is the green color. You guys could probably imagine what this looks like inside with the white color. It makes it very, very bright. And it blends in in the wintertime for snow camo. So this is a good look at the inside. I'm gonna to move to the outside and show you guys the tension on the sidewall. And then we're actually gonna show you the tarp with the snake skin because that's the last component that I wanna show you. Rolling the tarp up in the daytime inside of the snake skin so you can get it out of the way and then deploying it later on in the evening when it's time for bed or when it starts to rain. All right, so here we are on the side of the hammock. I've closed the front door again, and we're just taking a look at the angle created from these side pullouts. It's a little difficult to tell, but I'm just gonna detach both of these pegs and let this wall totally fall in and you'll see the difference that it makes. So that right there is your standard tarp setup. Now when the wind blows in, it's gonna push in on the shelter, as opposed to staying out and really deflecting a lot of that wind. Obviously you have to have both of them guide out, but that creates a ton of living room inside of the tarp, maximizing headroom and shoulder space. So I'm gonna get all the guy lines taken off and show you guys the snakeskin system. All right guys, all the guy lines are totally disconnected from the rain fly. Let's get this snake skin on. So it's pretty simple how it works. It just takes a bit of time kind of jumbling all the material in there and avoiding these guy lines getting snagged up. But if you take your time, it works really well. So what I like to do is kind of grab some of the tarp and funnel it together in your hand like that to basically preform the tarp to go inside of the snake skin. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is you need to have the snake skin over your tarp already when you set it up. So that means passing the ridge line through the snake skin because that's the only way to get it on or take it off. And then once you have it on one end, tighten up the, the drawstring and that'll basically stay at that end. It can't move any farther. And then you want to find the drawstring on the opposite end and then just start working the snake skin all the way down the tarp. And that'll basically bundle it all up inside and it'll be out of the way for daytime use. Okay guys, here we have the entire tarp encapsulated in the snake skin just above my head. It took me about 60 seconds to get it in there and that's with all the guy lines pre-attached to the tarp as well. As long as you pull the tarp down and work that snake skin over top, it does go on really well and it does the job very well. However, I will mention that I never use snake skins on tarps. In fact, I find it kind of foolish and I find it a gimmick item. If you want your tarp out of the way, all I do is simply flop one end open and hook it onto the opposing side tent pegs in the ground. 
and the tarps out of the way. So I never use this. In fact, I always find it funny when people use snake skins. It's another piece of gear that you really don't need to have. Does it work? Yes, absolutely. And I know some people are going to disagree with me, but I find snake skins a total gimmick. If it's not raining, why have the rain fly on, right? If it's windy, you know, it just, it takes a few minutes to set up the fly. But like I said, I just take my, this side of the fly off the ground. I flop it over top and I attach it to the pegs on the back side. And then if it gets windy or rainy, I simply flop it over and close it up for the evening. So that is everything in the one wind lineup. Basically, I have all the products. This is all sent to me from one wind. However, I will mention that no, I do not take direction, any kind of script. There's no affiliate link. I am not affiliated at all. There's no discount code, no promo code, nothing involved. This is totally my review, 100% honest for you guys. So I'm going to get this all wrapped up and then we're going to go into my final thoughts. All right, so it is now time for my final thoughts. The rest of the hammock kit is still hanging in the tree. I do have the top coat with me here though. So my final thoughts on the one wind hammock system is two thumbs up. I really enjoy it. Lone Wolf approved. It works really great for me. The under quilt, the blanket, all the accessories, the hammock, the tarp, especially that tarp. I love the tarp. Everything works really, really well. It is both budget, it's affordable, it's on Amazon, it's readily available for a lot of people around the world. And I personally really do enjoy it. Now, if you're a flat hammock layer, you can lay diagonally inside of the hammock to flatten out a little bit. I typically don't like to lay diagonally because I find myself falling out of the underquilt. And when you're camping in negative 20 to negative 25 degrees Celsius, even an inch outside of that underquilt, you're going to feel the cold come in. So typically I'll lay straight. I'll hang the hammock really nice and tight and get a flat lay. Um, but that's basically how I sleep in it. So my final thoughts, like I said, everything's really, really interesting. Now I chose not to mention any of the specs in this video because it would have just been an hour and a half long. It would have been way too long. However, if this video does get to 2,500 likes, I will then do an individual review on each and every item from One Wind that I have right now. So I feel that's a pretty fair goal for you guys to achieve if you do want to see the individual reviews. However, I feel that I did cover everything in pretty good detail that I don't think the individual reviews are really needed. But if you guys really do want to see it, get the video up there in likes and I'll break down each and every individual item that I have in a review with total specs and everything. So I'm interested to hear what you guys think of the one wind hammock system. Drop that down in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think. And that is basically it for today. So peace out and I'll catch you in the next video.